How to combat Anki burnout without losing your streak. If that sounds like something you want to know, then stay tuned. Mm -hmm. What's up everyone, welcome to Jozu Jewels. On this channel, I aim to share tips and tricks while learning Japanese with the goal of documenting my progress and helping you save time. So if that sounds up your alley, then subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any new uploads. This video is going to be unscripted, so I hope I don't ramble too much, but let's get into it. Okay, so we're in Anki. Yes, this is Anki. If you want to see how to turn your Anki into this, check out the video up here. All right, so there's an extremely important thing that you need to understand about Anki, and it's the fundamental way that Anki works. Anki is designed to help you retain 90% of the information that you put into it as long as you use it every single day. The streak itself is just a number, right? We shouldn't be trying to continue the streak just so that we can continue a number. We need to be using it every single day so that we can retain 90% of the knowledge. That's what we're really aiming for here. The second thing you need to know is the role of Anki, specifically in terms of language acquisition. Many people confuse Anki for actual learning, which it is not. Anki is just a supplement. Remember that real language learning comes from immersion, meaning the goal should be to spend less time in Anki and more time in immersion. So it's a good idea to think about how long you spend on each card on average and multiply that by the amount of cards you have left to review. This way you can mathematically find out how long it will take you to get through your entire deck. For example, because I like writing down all my cards by hand, I make my average time per each card as 10 seconds. Then I know that if I have 20 cards remaining, it would probably take me about 200 seconds. Another thing Anki is doing here is it's training your fast recall. If it takes more than 30 seconds for you to recall something, it's taking too long. There are exceptions to this rule, and I myself use this exception. I'll explain it as we go along. Okay, so we know the role of Anki. We're supposed to use it every day, and we don't want to spend too long on it. The main reason people burn out is because they spend too damn long on it. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we don't spend too long on it. At my stage where I'm currently at in my Japanese studies, about a year and a little bit more in, I try to aim about one hour to one and a half hours max in Anki every single day. You should be doing that on a daily basis already so that you prevent burnout from hitting you blindsided. Okay, but what if burnout does come? What if you're feeling it? Let's, let's put the burnout measures in place. The first thing you do is you knock off all the new cards. So I've got 74 reviews, 20 new, 81 reviews, 24 new. I would go into the options and just knock this down to zero. We're not learning new cards anymore. We're only going to be reviewing already known cards. This is going to cut the amount of time in Anki that we need to spend down by a lot because we don't need to spend time and brain power remembering new things. So that's step one. Take off all the new cards. Once you do this, see if you can get through the day without learning new cards. Just review already known stuff. And you keep on doing this until you feel motivated again to learn new words. So after you take off all the new cards, there are still more measures that you can take to fight off the burnout. If putting one hour, half an hour is still feeling like too much for you, then it's time to knock off things that you usually do in your Anki routine and just stop doing them. So for example, here's like a card with the definition on it. In my usual routine, if I get this card, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take out my notebook and write down the word in Japanese. And then I'm going to say out loud the word with the correct pitch accent. When I was burned out last November, I cut not just writing, but I cut off verbally saying the word so that I didn't have to worry about saying it and also the pitch accent stuff. I didn't have to worry about any of that, so I cut out three different things there. Will I see a decrease in my writing ability and my ability to, to put the definition to the word because I rely on muscle memory to write all these characters down? Y yes, I will. However, seeing a decrease in one area of my Japanese abilities is better than seeing a full-on like stoppage of Japanese learning because I'm so burned out. It speeds up the process by a lot. And while we're on the topic of saving time, I've made this video in the past called Top 5 Tools That Japanese Learners Need To Know. I'll link it up here, but that video has a lot of tools that can help you save time in Anki. Remember earlier how I also mentioned that you shouldn't be spending more than 30 seconds on a card and ideally you'd spend 10 seconds on each card? Well, okay, well that's not really that easy to track unless you have a timer somewhere, right? Which is exactly why you should install the timer plugin. So this is the one that I use, Speed Focus Mode Auto Alert Auto Review Auto Fail. I don't use auto alert, auto reveal, and auto fail. I just use this plugin for the timer so that I can time it myself. So if I go into any of my decks, right there, there's a very tiny timer ticking. Once that reaches 10, I know I'm doing this slowly. Once this passes 30, I don't care how close I am to getting the word. If I need to think that long for it, it's not close enough. So after 30, I just auto move on. For me, the exception is if I need to write it down because it takes me time to write, so give me more than 30 seconds to write the thing down, right? One more thing you can do to avoid burnout while still being able to learn a few new words 
This is probably useful when you're at the end phases of burnout and you're trying to get back into your regular schedule. You don't need a regular schedule. You always hear people talking about, oh, you should learn 20 cards a day, you should learn 30 cards a day, you should learn X amount of cards a day. You don't need to do that. I personally have the opposite approach. I think about how many cards I want to do today and how many cards I want to do tomorrow. If today I wanted to do 80 cards, new 80 cards, that's a lot of new cards. However, tomorrow I'm going to have to review all those 80 cards. So I think tomorrow, will I feel like doing that again? Most of the time the answer is no. So then I won't do 80 cards a day, but I still want to do more today. What about say 30, right? If I wanted to do 30 today, would I want to do 30 tomorrow? 30 is not that big of a number. I can do 30. Okay, cool. If I don't feel like doing 30 today, if I feel like doing like five, I mean, I can do five tomorrow too. I'll do five. Your schedule can fluctuate depending on how you feel. I personally like to set a bare minimum. If we peek inside this RTK deck, you can see that all of these cards are ready. Like they have the kanji, they have the keyword. That, that's all you need for an RTK deck. So it, it's it, everything is ready. I can set a baseline, a bottom line that every single day, even if I don't feel like it, I'll do two cards. Cause that's just one note. That's one new kanji. That's extremely easy. And I don't have to put in the extra effort of setting up the card. This is different to my main deck than the Hongo deck over here. This deck does not have already set up cards. So for example, today I'm doing 24 cards, right? So I have all these cards set up. They have an expression, they have the meaning, they have the reading, they have the audio, and they have an image. Everything after that is not set up properly, which means that the baseline for this deck is zero. The final, final, final thing that you should do, right? And this, is, this should be avoided at all costs, is you take a cheat day. I've had to take cheat days. If you take a look at my November, there are actually three cheat days. However, my streak continues. So the cheat days is when you continue on the streak on Anki, but you forfeit learning for the day. Anki's streak counts when you do a review. So right now, I haven't done any reviews today. The longest streak right now is 130. However, if I go into here and just do one, so this word is uh, climate, right? Climate, then I'll pass it, okay. Now it's 131 days, so technically my streak continued. If I wanted to close off right here, I could, and my streak continues, and I just have to do the rest tomorrow. However, please don't do that. You're gonna hurt yourself in the long run, because tomorrow you're gonna have to do a shit ton of cards. When you are taking a cheat day, on the bare minimum, do at least two cards in your deck. So for me, I've got two decks. I would do, if I wanted to take a cheat day today, I've just done one card here, I would do one more card here, and then I would move on to my Nihongo deck and do two cards there as well. Once that's done, I've done four cards in total. And then you have to look at the number of cards that you have left. So 73 left. And you have to think to yourself, tomorrow that's going to be doubled. I'm going to have to do 140 tomorrow. You are not allowed to take two cheat days off in a row because it will stack up way too much and you will never be able to recover. One day cheat day maximum. Turn off all the new cards before you take cheat days. You should be taking off all the new cards way before this even happens. You should not feel the urge to take a cheat day before you've done any of the steps before, right? Cheat days are reserved for like the very end. And ideally, all right, ideally, you, this is what you want to do on your cheat day. You want to do two cards in the first deck, two cards on the next deck, and then look at the number and then be like, hell no, I don't want to do those cards. No, I don't want to do 140 cards tomorrow. In that scenario, you go in and you do two more and then you do two more. And then you look at the number and you're like, mm -mm, still too high. You do two more and two more and you keep doing two by two by two. You don't need to finish the entire thing. You just do it until you're like, okay, the number is 50. I can do a hundred tomorrow. Just a hundred. That's fine. Like if I'm learning new cards, I'm already doing 94 cards today anyway. So if I do a hundred cards that I already know, it's going to be even easier than doing 90 cards plus st stuff that I don't know. Right. At the end of the day, your streak continues. You miss one day, so in terms of Anki effectiveness, you've dropped because some cards are definitely going to be forgotten that would not have been forgotten otherwise. But that is ultimately better than completely dropping off and not doing Anki at all. Oh, and by the way, if you want to know how I have this repository of all these words that I haven't learned yet, I'm making a video on that right now and you can click up here when it's out. Or, since it's not out yet, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified when it comes out. Join our Discord server if you want a bit of extra motivation and you want to chat with us there. And good luck with your studies. Cheers.